How's it going, everybody? Jack's Journalism back with another video today. We're going to be talking about the North American LCS Promotion Relegation Tournament. We're talking about Team 8 versus Complexity, as I think it's going to be the closest matchup of the tournament. Uh, it's going to be an explosive series. It's going to be a very close series. And I'm calling it at about a 50-50. And I really want to break down um, these players, how they stack up against each other, and the, the particular things that we might see. Um, so that's kind of what this video is. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, uh, basically I've got this whiteboard here. I talk about each lane or each role with the respective player for each team. And then a couple picks on the side, uh, champions that are high priority, highly contested, or comfort fallback picks. And I'll just kind of go top to bottom talking about each one of these players and what they bring to the table. What I did change from my last video was that instead of um, these kind of fluff stats that I had down there, I now have a ban section uh, for things that I think might not see the light of day or things that will be like reactive bans throughout the series, as well as a wild card section uh, of things that are more pocket picks, things that we might not have seen in competitive play so far, but these players are capable of pulling out, um, and just things that we might expect to see. Because you have to remember, Complexity, we haven't seen play competitively since week 11 of the North American LCS. Team 8, we've seen them play the Challenger Series playoffs and finals, but other than that, no real third-party tournaments or anything. So we, we've only got a limited amount of uh, information to work on, but there's definitely a lot that can happen. So I want to jump right into it with the top lane. We've got West Rice versus Cali Trolls. Now this matchup, if you look at it at face value, a lot of people would rate rate West Rice uh, towards the bottom of LCS top laners, whereas Cali Trolls kind of sits at the very top of the Challenger top laners. And you know, you look at that on paper and you think, oh, Cali Trolls is going to crush this guy. Well, that's not necessarily true for a multitude of reasons. I think the first reason uh, to talk about is the actual champions that they play. They both play the Maokai. They both play the Gragas. They both play the Nidalee. Now, you, you're not going to see a ton of top lane bans in this matchup, which means that we're most likely just going to see these champions changing hands. And I doubt we are really going to see any deviation from that super tank initiator uh, in the top lane. And if anything, I'd say that Cali Trolls might try and pull out a pocket pick, something like his Fizz that we saw in the Challenger Series Finals. But for the most part, I think it's going to be Maokai changing hands. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of Gragas, a little bit of Dr. Mundo. Um, but nothing super explosive. We've seen West Rice play the Aurelia. Um, we've seen Cali Trolls play, like I said, the Fizz, um, the Gragas. I just don't think we're going to see anything super explosive, which does not leave a lot of room for one player to outplay the other. And West Rice, in his play style, towards the beginning of the split, was very easily punished. He is an aggressive player. He wants to be a playmaker, but... Uh, he would often get caught overextending and playing selfishly, and that would just lead to a huge hit for Cole uh, Complexity's early game. Uh, that being said, I just feel like he's grown a lot over the season. He's improved a ton over the season. He's transitioned from that carry style of play to being the frontline initiator and that backline diver that complexity needs. And towards the middle of the split, he kind of flipped this switch, and all of complexity's great fights were coming off the back of West Rice. And I think that if he employs this style of play and remembers how to not get behind early, that Cali Trolls uh, will not be able to single-handedly shut him down. Um, I think it's going to go... Uh, to a very even lane with a lot of farming. Um, we'll probably see some lane swaps and we'll probably see a little bit of early double jungling from these guys. So overall, I'd say a little bit of a boring top lane. Although if anything, look for Cali Trolls being the shot caller for Team 8 to start having a, a lot more impact when the dragon calls start running in and the rotations start uh, forming from mid to top. 
um, getting that Baron coverage in. That's when Cali Trolls, I think, is really going to excel this series, and West Rice is going to have to make sure that he keeps up. Now, going down to the jungle, we've got Kez versus Porpoise Pops. And with these, they play kind of a different style of play, so I'll talk about each one specifically. Um, Kez, when he made his LCS debut, he kind of uh, solidified himself as an early game vision controlled jungler. He's very comfortable on sight stone junglers where he can get a lot of vision down. Um, Prolly being the main shot caller for the team uh, will make a lot of the calls, but Kez, when Prolly is slumping behind in lane or just starts to fall silent, Kez will pick up that slack. So you see Kez kind of being the main objective setup for the team. And that with that kind of role, he's not always the most impactful. Uh, he will not be playing a carry style jungler. I doubt we'll see him on something like a Kha'Zix where he's going to be looking to get a lot of kills early, but I think that he's very consistent in his ward coverage, and I think that is one of the biggest things that he's going to be bringing to the table against this team. And that's honestly a huge boon against Porpoise Pops, who is playing the Kha'Zix. He's playing the Nocturne, and both of these junglers can be very easily shut down with proper vision control. And if Kez can play the vision control game better than Porpoise Pops, can play the early game aggression, then it spells good things for complexity. The only uh, issue I really have here for Kez is his champion pool. He plays Elise and Eve. I think the last couple weeks in the LCS, he literally only played Elise and Eve, and we haven't seen him play since then. Um, he has been picking up a little bit of the Rengar in solo queue. I've got Rengar down here for him for wild card picks. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that, especially not with Prolly being a Oriana player. I can see them running one of those Rengar Oriana Wombo combo uh, team comps. But honestly, I think that if complexity comes out with a strong vision control game from Kez that teammate might look to shut him down a little bit in bans banning away his Elise and maybe picking up something like an E for Porpoise Pops because when it comes to champion pool Porpoise Pops has the advantage he's a lot more diverse um, Porpoise Pops I mean he's been playing well pretty much just rotates between that Kha'Zix and Nocturne right now I can definitely see him playing Nunu with how Nunu has come into power. I actually think that Kez might pick that one up as well. Haven't seen him play a ton of it in solo queue, but Porpoise Pops has been spamming that Nunu with how strong it is and how, con how contested of a pick it is. I would definitely see expect to see some Nunu picks and some Nunu bans if that's not something that Kez is fully comfortable on yet. Um, so then going down to the mid lane, we've got Prawley versus Slushy. And Prawley is the ultimate wild card in terms of mid laners for the LCS. Uh, the guy is mechanically gifted, although uh, he just kind of, he's explosive, but he's not consistent. Uh, he can make a lot of plays for his team. He has that shot color, but he's not like the rock by any means for complexity. Whereas Slushy has been a consistently good performer, but... Do, isn't as explosive, um, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, but first I want to get some picks off the table. We've got Syndra that probably plays well. Slushy plays it as well, so that one I think is going to be very contested, as well as the Ziggs, which is kind of signature probably. Probably even said on uh, Summoning Insight that he watches foreigners play Ziggs, and he's thinking of the things that they could be doing better, uh, and I think Probably he just really prides himself on that Ziggs. Um, so I, I would see that coming out. But it's it's kind of weird because we have we've seen Ziggs fall from favor, but Slushy actually is a huge Ziggs player. Um, he draws the most bans on team eight for things like his Yasuo and his Syndra. So he will often fall back on that Ziggs, and he, he plays well. Um, he, he doesn't necessarily carry on that Ziggs, but he does what his team needs him to do. And it's going to be really interesting what kind of dynamic that champion is going to play in this matchup when Prawley and Slushy both value it so highly. Um, as far as Slushy's other pick, I've got Oriana, 
where he plays that champion. It's not, but it's not his go-to by any means. But the fact that he plays it means that he could very easily snatch that up to stop that uh, Rengar Orianna comp that I was talking about from happening. If that's something that Complexity has been running in scrims wants to pull out, um, it would be very easy for Team Eight to halt that. Um, by handing Slushy Oriana. Um, and I just think it's going to be a pretty even matchup. The only way I would see it tipping is to... It's basically all on Slushy's picks, and it's all about what complexity bans. Slushy is never allowed to play Yasuo. That is just a champion where he goes from good to phenomenal. Like, he skips great. He skips fantastic. Nobody lets Slushy play Yasuo because it is truly at a higher tier than the rest of what he plays. And I think that there's a good chance Complexity actually won't ban that champion. Um, and if they do, if they don't ban it, there are two things that, that are going to happen. They're not going to value his Yasuo. They're going to underestimate it, and he's going to go off and win a game. Or, probably is going to be pulling out a Rise pick uh, or a Zed pick, and they're going to be expecting the Yasuo, and probably will be very comfortable playing into it. probably has been picking up the Zed in solo queue. He's been picking up the Rise in solo queue. Two things we've seen used against Yasuo to great effect. Um, so I think that this mid lane is going to be a lot more counterplay and a lot more mind games than the rest of what's going on. It's going to be super fun to watch, and I honestly think that the lead, as far as that mid lane goes, is going to shift back and forth from game to game. Um, and now moving down to the bot lane, um, as you know, I like to talk about the bot lane as a whole, even though I've got them listed separately. We've got Robert X. Lee and From Maple Street. Uh, both of these 80 carry players like to play long range hyper carry style champions. However, there is a difference in how each player plays. Whereas Robert X. Lee, he draws a lot of bans for complexity, particularly on that Tristana. Before we saw Tristana's rise to obnoxious strength, he still drew bans on that champion almost every week in the LCS. Um, he is kind of known for a little bit of reckless team fighting, but like I said, when West Rice has gotten so good at setting up those team fights, it affords a lot of room for error on Robert X Lee's parts. And playing reset kind of carries like Tristana with her jump and Jinx with the get excited passive, you see Robert go for these reckless plays that either look awesome where he gets the reset, he pulls off some crazy double triple. Um, quadra, or he is immediately blown up and kind of looks stupid. But I think that it works out in his favor more often than not. And the actual AD carry champion pool is going to play a big part in this. Uh, from Maple Street, he prefers um, hyper carries. Definitely, you will see him on something like a Kogma before you'll see him on something like a Corky. He can still bring out that Corky, as I have listed for both, but he has been favoring this Kogma Nami lane with Dodo. And it's weird because you, you look at that as like a bully lane, but with the way that Dodo plays, it almost, um, it almost detracts from that bully lane and turns more into the significance of the late game Kogma more than the mid game Kogma. Uh, you'll see him more relevant in the late game fights than in the mid game fights after that Triforce has been completed. Um, and that, like I said, that is a big factor as far as the supports go. Because Bubba Dub, he plays in lane with a lot of presence. Uh, he plays a lot of Thresh. He plays a lot of Morgana. He's very diverse, actually. I mean, he's not one of those players where you look at him and you go like, oh, he's a this player. You know, like he, he can pull out different things from game to game. But I have to uh, give Bubba Dub some credit for his presence in lane. I think that he has always been a lackluster support when you look at the other bot lanes of North America. But he's done a very good job developing with Robert X. Lee. Um, to become a, a pretty scary laner, um, especially when you give Robert something like uh, his Tristana. Uh, whereas Dodo, he is like the challenger version of Kiwi Kid. 
he will take tanky champions and he will roam excessively. Like, it's just obnoxious how much this guy is all over the map. He plays a lot of Braum. He plays a lot of Alistar. And he's known to play Thresh. Um, that's something I think we'll probably see from him. But it's not a super prominent pick for him. And obviously you can see the Braum overlaps for each one. But Dodo is definitely going to be tunneling on this Nami pick here. Team 8 as a whole has just been tunneling on this Kogma Nami lane, and that's not something that we see from Complexity. We hardly see Robert play Kogma. We, n we never see Bubba Dub play Nami. So the differences in their champion pool will play a big factor in this. And with Dodo 8's Nami play, he does not roam nearly as much as he does on the tanks. Um... So I think if we see a standard lane from these guys, I would have to give the edge to From Maple Street and Dodo 8 just because they play the, these bully-style lanes as of late, and they're going to be looking to get ahead early. Now, that being said, we got our wild card picks to talk about because one of my favorite new supports that we've been seeing lately is Zillion. And that's something that Bubba Dub has picked up recently in solo queue, spammed quite a bit of, whereas Dodo 8, not really been playing that one. I'm um, not sure really what complexity has been doing in scrims, but I would have to say that they are picking up the Zillion. It's just too good of a pick right now, especially with Prawley Syndra, with Robert X Lee's Tristana, and with Robert X Lee's Corky. Uh, both of these players play Corky, but neither value it very highly. But if we see that Zillion pick with the Corky, that's a lot of upfront unblockable damage in lane. Um, and it would actually be a, a decent counter to this Kog'Maw Nami lane that they've been bringing out. Also, just huge power spikes in the mid game when you've got that, you know, that Triforce Corky spitting out a ton of damage. You take it down and it's popped right back up. So I think that the Zillion is going to be an exciting pick that we will see from uh, Bubba Dub in the bot lane. Might see Dodo 8 try and pick it up. Doubt it's going to be a mid lane pick for either of these guys. If anything, maybe Prawley. Um, and that's, I mean, that's kind of each player in particular, uh, what they're going to be looking at. I'm sure uh, I might have left out some of this stuff down here. So talking about the bands really quickly, Tristana. You want to take that away from Robert X. Lee. That's a given. Elise, you want to take it off Kez if you want to make him uncomfortable. I doubt we'll see any of either of these junglers targeted early on. But if either has a very significant impact on the game with their uh, respective jungling styles, I think we can definitely see some bans. Uh, the Maokai, I don't see it being a super prominent ban, but I can see it coming out there especially with the way that Cali Trolls has his pocket picks, has his fallbacks. I can see them taking it away from West Rice and trying to force him on something he's a little bit less comfortable on. Um, as far as Team 8 goes, you will see that Yasuo ban against Lushi, like I said, 95% of his games. Uh, Nidalee is a pretty frequent ban against California Trolls. Not sure if he would really want to pull that out, because like I said, he's the shot caller, so he does work well on these um, tanky initiation champions. Um, and I don't know if you necessarily want your shot caller on a split pushing Nidalee. If he's looking really hard to just win his lane aggressively, we might see the Nidalee, but honestly, I feel like it would just be banned regardless. I feel like that's something they don't want to put in the hands of a mechanically skilled player like Cali Trolls. Last but not least is that Ziggs um, probably plays it and probably loves it, but probably does not play it like Slushy plays it. And it, I almost want to say that Slushy relies on the Ziggs. He does perform on other champions, but he plays Ziggs at a very high level. Um, so they might try and take the Ziggs away from Slushy. Um, as just another comfort pick taken away because he is the he's the priority of most teams' bans. And I can definitely see complexity is trying to ban out Slushy completely. So I can see that Ziggs coming out as a ban. Um Wildcard picks, Kez has been playing that Rengar in solo queue. It doesn't fit his competitive style of play. Um 
I would not say, although he does play the Evelyn, so maybe this is just the next evolution of that. Um, Zillion, we talked about for Bubba Dub. Zed is just a very strong laner coming into this. I think we'll see it on Prawley before we see it on Slushy. Um, it just is doesn't seem like too much of a Slushy champion right now. Uh, Fizz on Cali Trolls. If you have not seen Game 3 of the North American Challenger Series Finals, Team 8 versus Curse Academy, you should probably watch that or at least check out a highlight reel because Cali Trolls is unstoppable on that champion. He used to be a Fizz-only player, so it only makes sense he would go back to his roots and be a complete monster. Uh, Twisted Fate, we might see that on to Slushy uh, just because of how much Porpoise Pops has been playing Nocturne. They could go for a global pick comp with the Nocturne and the Twisted Fate synergy, but that's only a pick he's been taking out occasionally, not a frequent one by any means. Um, and then the Nunu, like I said, very, very um, prioritized lately. I honestly don't know if it should be a wild card. It maybe should just be in the main um, pick section of both of these junglers because I think it's going to be super contested. Um, that's about all I want to talk about today. Uh, I just like to go over each individual player and the picks that we might see because I feel like it just paints a cool picture for when you're actually watching the games. You can be like, oh, yeah, you know, I heard they were very good on this. It's like, oh, Slushy got Yasuo. What's going to happen? Um, so I hope that the picks are enough to get you guys super interested. However, if there's something else you'd want to see me cover in these videos, please let me know. Uh, still working on the format, still trying to get everything down pat, and I'm, I'm having a great time so far. So as long as you guys are happy with the videos, I'm happy, but um, just keep that feedback coming. Thanks, guys. Maybe.